things. We said the instructions of God do not make sense. We said the favor of God do not make sense. I told us from when we started that for the Orthodox people, those who are very religious, like this topic is a no-no. But I believe that the things of God, the things that God does sometimes, it baffles us, it's not the ordinary way we think it should be. And we talked about the instructions of God. We used the, the scenario of the, of the widow whose husband had died and left her in death. And the Bible says that there they were asked to, she was asked to go and pour the only bottle of oil she had left and go and distribute it, distribute it in empty pots, empty barrels that you, it doesn't make sense because what if it doesn't happen? If it doesn't happen as it, it's thought, you can't go and say, okay, let me gather the oil back because we are pouring drops and drops and drops in it. How do you tell someone who has got nothing to go and distribute? How do you tell someone who has got no food to eat, to give? But that's just the way God works. The instructions of God do not make sense. <clears throat> and then we say the favor of God, which we talked about last week, it doesn't make sense. This week we're going to be talking about the timing of God. It just doesn't make sense. The timing of God does not make sense. Let's quickly look at the book of John. Chapter 11. I don't know if I can pick a few scriptures from in there. Because it's a really long read. John 11. From verse 1. John 11. From verse 1. John, John 11. From verse 1. Thank you media. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and, his sis, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the, the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, him whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that said he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thee that again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. This thing said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Verse 17. Then when Jesus, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Mary unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been there, my brother would not have died. But I, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whatsoever liveth and, belie whatsoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art Christ. Uh, verse, verse 37, verse 38. Jesus therefore again, growing in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wilt believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. 
Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. And he that was dead came forth. Somebody say, the timing of God does not make sense. Oh, say it one more time. The timing of God does not make sense. Now, in this scripture, what happened? Easy story. Jesus was a friend of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. He's gone there to eat before. When Jesus had finished doing work, when he wants to go cool off, he'll go cool off at the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. But what happened on this day? He sent a message to Jesus. Jesus, your friend is sick. And Jesus didn't go. It's a place where you go eat for crying out loud. You should be on your way. Like really. But Jesus did not go. The Bible says he tarried two days. And by the time Jesus got there, he was already dead for four days. So I don't know how long it takes to transport to, to journey all the way. Because by the time Jesus got there, he was dead for four days. Now, the Bible says that when Jesus arrived the place. Now, in the days of old, they, because of the, I think we are experiencing the heat now. So you can see that the food that you normally leave overnight after you have made it, you know, on a, when it's in winter, you leave the food overnight and you can even leave it there three, four days because being out is like fridge. But now, when you make food, before you go upstairs and have a shower and come back, you're already wondering what is it. Especially if you're cooking African style. After you've spent three hours cooking one pot of soup, it just takes another three hours for it to spoil. Why? Because of the weather condition. Now, in the, in the time of Jesus, they had hot tropical condition. So if, when a, uh, somebody dies, they bury them immediately because it will take a few days for it to decompose. The body will begin to. Now, after three days, you know, when Jesus came, he said, oh, I will, let, let's go and pray for him. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. He stinketh. He stinks. It, it, you can, we, we don't want to cause chaos in this place. Environmental what a hazard <laughs> health and safety don't even try it and then what happened what interests me is why did Jesus not go there immediately why did he have to wait until Lazarus was, Lazarus was dead for four days to go there if you, is it not easier to heal a sickness than to raise a dead man? I can't hear you. Is it not easier to heal a sickness than to raise a dead man? Why do you have to stress God? You know, one thing is that when God wants to come big or when God comes late, you just know that he wants to come big. He wants to, when he, when he comes late, just know that, oh no, he's preparing a, te a wonderful testimony. I remember in our church a long time ago, we had the first couple who got married in the church. 18 years later, the people who were children in the church got married, had children. This couple still didn't have children. The embarrassment got so much that they were going to pack their things, and sell their house, they put their house, their everything, and were moving out of the country. Because people began to ask them questions. Oh, what, what did you do? You killed all the babies in your belly before you got married. Oh, if you are Nigerian, you just know that, that sort of thing. Like people, people will be greeting you and smiling at your face. I know you're trying to be like, hmm. When you want to help, a baby is crying in the church. You want to help carry the baby. They'll be like, oh, no, no, don't touch him. You know that kind of thing because they say, ah, no, you don't know how to do it. You know how a woman will feel? Not that you don't. You don't, not that you wanted to, or you don't want to have children, but you wanted to have children and you could not. Now, this woman was about 18 years. And she was not like oh, any member in the church. It's, she was very, you know, she was a dickiness. So it was the husband. They were doing things in the church. So they were very seen. In Europe, you can decide you don't want children. 
in Africa, even if you don't decide, even if you decide you don't want children, your neighbors will decide for you. Like, after like nine months, you begin to get call. Your mom will be like, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Jennifer. Uh, what is my birthday gift today? Like, the one birthday gift is children. Literally, you just keep bearing. Keep giving them children. <clears throat> so, that was this woman's case. And then, every time, there would be word of knowledge from the, this thing. It's like she was used to it. Okay, come, yeah. Oh, there's a word. God is bringing your children. She, but she, would, she, she did not have faith anymore. She was like, oh, that's what God. She even went to take another child to be taking care of the child. Like another family member's child. Took care of the child. You know, did a lot of things. She never had her own. And one day, a man of God said, God was going to give you a, a set of twins. A boy and a girl. She said, amen. About one year passed. She was still not pregnant. I think about two years later, she got pregnant. And she didn't even know. You know, when you're not expecting it. She just, she was sick. Something was happening. And she was pregnant with a boy and a girl. Do you know that testimony turned the whole of my city upside down? When they announced that in the church, inside the church, that this lady gave birth, just like we announced today that, oh, we had two babies added in the month of June. People on the main road of the church, they were rolling on the, on the ground. Not, it, it was not them who gave birth. They were rolling on the ground, excited for the lady. Outside. If you know the ground we have in our group, Road is not hard though. It's red sand in my, my city. Red sand, like when you wear white shoe, which you never wear, you, when you are going back, your shoe will be like pink. <laughs> or brown. People were rolling on the floor, crying, shedding tears. Because of that testimony, a number of people came to church because of it. Say, if God can do this woman's own, ah, then it, there's nothing he cannot do. When God comes late, he wants to come big. Hallelujah. When the timing of God does not make sense. Now that was the same situation with the, with the issue of Lazarus. And Lazarus just, the Martha, when Martha saw Jesus, she was like, excuse me, Jesus, didn't you hear that Lazarus was dead? Didn't we send a message to you? Didn't you get my text message? Oh. Even my WhatsApp message, I even WhatsApped you. And Jesus was like, oh no, um, he will live again. He will resurrect. He said, ah, I know he will resurrect. By the way, Jesus, when I always send you text message that there is food, how we've made this thing, you always get the message and you come immediately. But in this situation, I was telling you that my brother, your friend is sick. And you didn't come. Because that's the truth. Because, I, you know, we already experienced the kind of person that Martha was before. Because the Bible says that when Jesus was in their place, Mary and Martha, Ma Mary was sat there and worshiping the feet of Jesus. And Martha came and was like, Jesus, can't you see that I'm busy in the kitchen? And Mary is just here, you know, uh, worshiping you and praising you. So that's the kind of person that Martha was. So even if Mary did not say anything, Martha came and said, you didn't get the message. I called you. I even saw you reject the call. <laughs> no, now let's bring it to our contemporary days. I believe if Jesus was here, he would be using an iPhone. What's the latest one? <laughs> oh, some people say Jesus would be using a Samsung Galaxy, whatever. I believe Jesus would have been on Snapchat and Instagram and all of the hashtag Jesus. <laughs> so Martha was like, didn't you hear when I called you telling you that, you know, uh, 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 Lazarus was dying and you didn't come. But every time it was food, you showed up and Jesus said, no, don't worry. I am the resurrection and the life. Now, when, this, when, Jesus, when Jesus woke Lazarus up from the grave, what would have been a better testimony? That Jesus healed Lazarus 
or that Jesus woke Lazarus from grave, from the dead. Jesus woke Lazarus up from the dead. That is a bigger testimony. So sometimes in our life when we are crying, oh God, I don't know what this, I don't know what is happening in my life. I don't know why this is going on. I don't know when God wants to come big, he will come late. Have you not seen in occasions, everyone is sat there. It's the masses that sit down first. And then when the, the very important personalities are coming, you would have been sat there. And then they will now walk through and pass you and be giving you a wave. Yeah, because the, be- the most important thing, they always come last. So sometimes we are crying over the situation. We are crying over what is happening. We are shouting and moaning. But God is just there looking at you. He if I do it now, it's a small testimony. But when I do it later, it's going to blow the minds of people. So it may not make sense right now. The situation, the circumstance, you are wondering, why, why, God, why is this thing happening? But God is just saying, I just want to come big. Slap your neighbor, high five, and say, God wants to come big. I uh, didn't see anybody give a neighbor a high five. Just give a neighbor a high five. Say, God wants to come big. We see that in the book of Daniel chapter 3, the, the story of the Hebrew brothers. The Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in fire. Before then, they were saying, you have to bow down to our God. What could be the best that will happen? That as they, as they, was, they were arguing and saying, then God would just do something. They would just be hypnotized and say, okay, don't bow down to our God. You know, people who want that prayer, why would God even allow us to encounter the people in the first place? Let them not even come and ask us. But they were faced with that trial. And in the end, they threw them in the, in the fire. That's Daniel chapter 3 if you are writing. And then verse, verse 25. When they were thrown in the fire, the Bible says that they became... Four men in the fire. That was a miracle of the century. Like, we put three people just now. No one has left here. Instead of the men to be burning, they looked like they were having fun inside fire. And they were not just, they're not just three. They were four men. Uh, in these modern days, you take a picture. Hashtag three to four. <laughs> yes. Because that, they had not seen something like that. If you look at the 30 of that Daniel chapter 3, the Bible says that they were promoted after they got out of the fire. Why? Because of the thing that they had just seen. They got promotion. I don't think they would have been promoted if they begged their way and then God now caused them to, something to happen and then they changed their mind. I said, okay, be worshiping your God, small, small, oh. Don't worship him here. Don't worship him in the public. Just do it. Do it on your own. Let's have peace. We have peace. You know, th- those people would have rejoiced and said, that's a miracle. But these hardened people to say, let's worship our God in our room. But God wanted to do it in a remarkable way. But the problem is that before we get to that very hot point, in the midst of the very hot disaster, Many of us will now deviate. The devil brings a circumstance. We will now be like, ah, no, this is too much for me. That's why you see women who are believing God for the fruit of the womb. Many of them, they, are, they, they, they cannot bear it anymore. Their family is about to push them away. They will not go and sleep with one prophet. They will have a child. It's not like there was anything wrong. The issue is that God was just about to step, step in. You just decided to give the devil the testimony. When God... Decides to come late. He wants to come big. That's when patience needs to come in. God is always on time. His timing is not our timing. And that's where we hear that delay doesn't mean deny. Hallelujah. Joseph. Joseph would never have become prime minister in the land if God had intervened in the pit. If God performed some miracle in the pit, Joseph would never have become a prime minister. So as I was reading the book of Genesis chapter 37, I penned down a number of things, which are, I believe are the seven Ps of Joseph's life. I think I asked the media to help me. The seven Ps. P, just P, the letter P. 
the seven P's. The seven P's of Joseph's life. Now, Joseph had a promise, which was a dream that he had. Just like many of us had to have a promise about the things that God will do in our, in our career, in our academics, in our marriage, you know, in our finances, different things. We have a promise of God. But this promise was hunted down by the people in the life of Joseph, which were his brothers. The people. These people did everything to pull Joseph down. They did everything to make sure that the promise of God did not stand in the life of Joseph, the people. And then the next thing, after trying everything to, you know, to pull him down, they threw him in the pit. That was another problem. In my country, it's like saying from frying pan to fire. From one problem to another. God could have decided to rescue Joseph from the pit. Or even rescue him from the hand of the people. It was the previous one. To rescue him and say, oh no, this is too much for my son. Joseph could have been crying to the Lord. Lord, why have thou forsaken me? And then God rescued me from these people. He could have decided that. But what happened? God left him there. Because you see, the duration of your... Uh, Planting state or the duration of your, um, how do you call I'm not very good. I don't think I passed a Greek in school. The duration of your, <laughs> when, when you go in the ground or being rooted will determine how high the tree will be. How deep you go will determine how high. You see those weeds in your garden. You go today. When you're coming back tomorrow, you suddenly see them. They are not properly rooted. If you just take your hand and pull them out, they will come out. Why? Because they are not well rooted. Sometimes God uses trials to root you up. What as you are shouting, oh God, deliver me. Your pastor is asking, do you have any prayer requests? You're like, God, all those in my life. That, you know this voice is like prayer voice. All those in my life that will not allow me. You know, you pray like that. Kill them. Fire them. You know, you just destroy them. Let them go. Because we are too, we are just, whereas God is saying, leave them there. Leave them there. Because I want to come late so I can come big. Leave them there. You know, say, don't mind them. Just take your eye off. Just fix your eyes on me. And Joseph found himself in the pit. And God didn't take him out of the pit. God, 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 God took him. He thought maybe God would take him out of the pit to fulfill the dream that he had. But God took him out of the pit to the house of Potiphar. Just when he thought all was rosy, he landed in Potiphar's wife's issue. And then from the house of Potiphar, where did he go next? He went to the prison. Another P. And from the prison, after a number of process, after all... Joseph would have given up on God. Many of us in the situation of Joseph would have given, oh God, I served you. Oh God, I did this. Every time, even when sister so-so was not in church, I came. Oh God, I, you know, we compare ourselves. But you forget that the Iroko tree is different from the hibiscus flower. The time it takes the hibiscus flower to grow is different from how long it takes the Iroko tree to grow. So there are two different species of people. Don't use your life to compare anybody. Many, I think the days we are living in, it's a days where it's full of pretense. This week, the student church on their group chat, they were talking about online dating. Do you know how long it took that brother to pose on the camera to take that picture? You see another family. You, they, there was a time I was living that when I just got married. I would see all my colleagues, all my, that we graduated from uni together. I had to go off social media. So it killed my social me media enthusiasm. I would see all my friends. This one is now Dr. So, so, so. Dr. This. And I just got married. And I was living in Europe. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't do anything. I was begging for a cleaning job. Not anymore. I was begging for a cleaning job. I would be on social media. People would be asking me because I was very, I had, I had the mentality that I would do more than one degree. My father is a very intelligent man. 
If not that he's now doing ministry. He's very intelligent. So is my mother. And so I see them. I see them. They are, you know, I see all my colleagues. They are doing well. This one is now doctor so, so, so of something, something. Anatomy, physiology. The other one is now, I say, I'm like, oh my God, of all our class, I was the only one. I was married. All I knew that, oh, at least I see a married fine guy. That was my only consolation. I stayed there, stayed there. I forgot that, you know, I am a different personality. I've got a different future. My future is not the same as the future of another person. One day I was going to Nigeria. As I was in, I was in the airport, I saw my colleague. Man, I ran like the speed of light. I could not say hello. We were so close. I didn't want any question. What are you doing? You would think that my life should be better. I was living in Europe. They were living in Africa. No. But I, I hung in there. Many of us are carried away seeing another person. Say you are not married. Or you are married and your husband is not treating you well. You are seeing your friend. She and her husband they are posing in the front of Albert Dock. And then, or maybe posing by the, by the lock and key. And you are being like, You'll be like, wow. They've even gone to seal their love there. Do you know how many poses they took before they got that one? The girl is like, smile now. Then they take. They'll be like, no, it's not all right. They'll be like, okay, let's try another one. <laughs> cheese, cheese. Some of them, you even see them. They are kissing. And you think that all is well. Forget it. Don't compare your destiny with another man's. My dad used to tell, and he would even sing a song and say, the difference between you and I is time. The difference between you and I is time. The difference between you and the person you are sitting next to is time. When God does not make sense, the timing of God does not make sense. Now, all my friends, they became all my colleagues at uni. Many of them became doctors before me. Some of them lecturing in university. I am just quarter to get my, my own doctorate degree. But when I am here, I get messages. One say, oh, can we organize a seminar for you to come speak in our university? I'm like, who will pay the flight? <laughs> Don't undermine your future. Don't be in your routine stage and be crying over someone else who is already glowing. Because it just takes an a few wind, 70 miles per hour wind to blow it and it will blow it away. But you, the deeper you go, the deeper you go, when you begin to come out, you will last a lifetime. Do you know there are some trees that even in the winter, the leaves don't dry up? Do you know there are some trees even in the winter, no matter, they don't dry up, they are still there. Do you know how long it took them to get rooted? The timing of God may not make sense. He may not come when you want it. He may not come when you need him. But there's one thing for sure. He's always on time. I remember in this country, I'll share this testimony. I've got a bit more, but because of the Holy Communion, I'll leave it. In this same country, a couple of years ago, we had just acquired this place. We were only struggling. I just started the church. And we were only a few members. A few families. I think about two families. And everybody had sacked their posts, brought money to support the things of the church. We were only few. So is that you or you? That, so that was it. And we were studying. I was studying. My husband was studying. The little money that we were getting, instead of paying our rent and our bills, we took it and paid to help the church. After we are finished, we didn't have money to pay rent. Those ones said that they gave us section 21, leave the house. Then where would we live with two children? And we were there, worrying. We had no money. There was no way. You know, in this country, your, your income is just strategic for that month. You don't, except God intervenes. You don't have excess like that. So we were waiting. We called them. We didn't have nothing to balance it up. So we, we, when we pay the rent, we'll be like, June, for June. We won't, we won't buy dates. We'll be like, this is June. We'll pay for the month we are. And then they told us that they were going to send us out. How do we find another house with a section one? You won't get reference. 
you, if you are evicted, then you won't get a good reference. So where am I going to? So I, how do we become homeless? We we'll come to church every day and we smile. And then one day, we prayed, we prayed and said, God, this matter is about to go critical. It's getting very bad. But you know, there's one thing about God that God always steps in. You may not expect it. And then we called them. They told us, oh, no, don't worry. How are you? Why? Your, your rent has been paid. I'm like, huh? Excuse me. I know I said. So in my mind, I began to suspect. So maybe it's that sister in the church. And I said, but I did. You know, even pastor was asking me, did you tell so person in the church that we're on rent? I said, why would I to bring my uh, rapper and show the public? No, I didn't tell them we're on rent. I said, we are on point. So, so, it, it, so, when, so they told me on the phone. They said, so I said, okay. I have learned from my previous job that if, it, if it's not in writing, it never happens. So I told the lady, can you send me an email to confirm that I paid the rent? They sent an email. So, so, two months rent, cleared. Three months, yeah, three months rent, cleared. Okay. So, it came just at the point we were about to be thrown out of the house. If God had answered our prayer, maybe provided the money to pay the rent a couple of months ago, when we're owing, let's say, one month's rent, we would have said, oh, God did a miracle. But that God waited one month, two months, three months, till today, it's three years now. We don't know who paid that rent. Till today, they sent us confirmation and said, look at, your, your rent has been paid. It was on email. Even when we were going, we were thinking, maybe when we are now going, they will now find out that, uh, uh, it was an error. We were careful to the end. God is my witness. Till to, if you are in doubt, ask me after the service. I'll show you the email. Till today, we don't. And I did not ask too many questions because I don't want them to now go and discover what they're not supposed to discover. I said, "Oh, you said I should pay." Oh, I said, "Oh, maybe it's my husband." Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll check with him. When God comes late, he wants to come big. Somebody say, God is always on time. Oh, say it one more time. Over my situation, God is always on time. Bow down your heads and begin to say, Lord, I thank you. Because this situation is just a phase in my life. Thank you, thank you, Father. This situation is just a stepping stone. Ah, because you always come through for me, regardless of the circumstance. You will always come through for me. Thank you, Father. Begin to pray, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, because you, you step in in the nick of time. You step in, you are always on time. Always on time, God. I give you praise. I adore you. Thank you, Father. Begin to pray. The Lord will give you patience to wait for his timing. The Lord will give you patience to wait for his time. Ask the Lord for his patience. That you have realized that he wants to come big. He wants to show himself strong and mighty. Pray that the Lord will give you grace to wait patiently for him. Because the victory is ahead of you. That the Lord will give you patience. Round up your prayer and begin to pray and ask the Holy Ghost to cause victory to be on your life this month. That even as the word has been spoken in the atmosphere that this is the month of victory. That you will experience victory. That by this time next month, as you come here, you will have a bunch of testimonies to tell about how victorious you were. In the name of Jesus. I pray that even as we take the Holy Communion. That every area of your life where it seems like you were defeated. You will experience the victory of, of Jesus. Lord we thank you for this communion that we are about to take. We declare that it's no more bread and wine. But now the body and the blood of Jesus. That even as we take it. We remember this day the price that Jesus paid for us. And we declare that everyone who will take this communion, who may be sick in their body, will receive healing. We declare that everyone who is experiencing one form of defeat or the other, we experience a victory through Jesus. We thank you, Father.
This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You take your communion, even as the choir, give us some solemn music. That's all my song will be. song will be that's what my song will be say hallelujah hallelujah and that's what my song will be that's what my song will be communion now you can take the bread the body of Jesus and the wine the blood of Jesus my song will be yeah. hallelujah that's what my song will be
Lord, we bless you, Lord, for this service we've had. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We came to the word of this month that this shall be our month of victory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to take the declaration for the month, for this week, uh, right now. We're going to declare the words of the Lord. The Bible says that wherever the word of a king is, not where the king is, that there is power. Are we ready to declare the word of God over our lives? Are we ready to declare? All right, let's rise on our feet and talk authoritatively. Praise God. You just repeat after me. I affirm that I'm a child of the king. The spirit of God has ushered me into a place of rest where everything is commanded to work together for my good. This is the morning of my life and the anointing of the Holy Ghost has set me apart for greatness. I, I have received the abundance of grace and a gift of righteousness. Therefore, in this new month of July, I walk in increased grace, wisdom, and divine provisions. I am excellent and full of glory. My path is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I am living the life of dominion. I am living the life of power. I am living the life of righteousness. Victory is mine in the name of Jesus. Everywhere I go, every, in, and in everything I do, I make project, progress with giant strides by the power of the Spirit and through the Word. The word of faith is in my heart and in my mouth. That's the word of faith which I live by. I speak the same things in concern with the word. I am victorious. I am prosperous. I am healthy, marvelously helped, favored of the Lord. Today in Jesus' name, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. This is the season of operation. Operation 200. We are sharing flyers. We are turning this place from being so number of people. I said that we can, if everyone put together in this church should come in one day, we are about a hundred of us. If everyone should come in one day, we are about a hundred of us. The students most of them have gone and this is just like and even we're not complete and the church is just about full so we are in the season of operation we need the evangelism team to do a lot of work but we on our own the best form of evangelism is one-on-one -on -one. get your neighbors drag them up i need to see from next week sunday we are having first timers filling everywhere that the old members will have to stand during the service. Yes. It's going to happen. Uh, yo, somebody said the younger ones. So please take a flyer. And let's uh, give up. Have we got any first timers in our midst? Today? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, uncle at the back. If you wait behind after the service to see me. Uncle in. No, you turning back. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you. <laughs> Amen. Please, for, we, we have two people who have given birth in this uh, two weeks ago. Okay, okay. Can we make sure that we pay them a visit? Uh, I think we are going in groups or whatever, uh, or going to pay them a visit, call them. Uh, some might need some help. You want to be their helping hand. Amen. 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 We've got a very special guest in our midst this morning. He has been the one who like was the best dancer in this church this morning. Yeah, that's true. Like he is the dad of Pastor Peter. Amen. At 
82, he's still bouncing and dancing. And amen. Oh, you need to have seen him yesterday. You would have thought it's one of those kind of things that are on that online dating, and you think that they are potential guys. Like only those on the student church group will know. Um, he, yeah, he is. Um, he's been visiting us this week, and he's going to be around all over the UK for the next God knows how many months. So please, after the service, don't go. Don't be in a rush. Give him some love. Let him know that we love him and we appreciate his coming. Amen. Amen. All right. He was one of the people who made me marry my husband. Like, he kept coming to my house, like, visiting. Like, yeah. Amen. All right. It's time to go home. I want to appreciate everyone for taking time uh, to be in church this morning. You know, you know, there's no church without you, so we celebrate you on behalf of myself and Pastor Peter. We love you. Thank you for always deciding to, you know, come around and fellowship God with us every Sunday morning. Amen. Join your hands with a neighbor and declare upon their life that every prophecy, every word that God has spoken over their life for this month of July, it will come to pass. Declare, declare, pray for that person. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Every good prophecy hanging in the atmosphere for every child of God that is joined hands today, it shall come to pass. The will of God will be done. The name of God will be lifted high in their lives. The thing that God will do in their life today will not make sense. The miracle that God will do in their life this, this month will not make sense. It will blow the minds of people. It will just make people go wow about the goodness of God. It shall be well this month. They know there are turbulence left, right, and center. But for these ones, it will be well. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say to your neighbor, say, surely, goodness, goodness, only goodness, favor, mercy, promotion, anointing, breakthrough, blessings on every side. Ah, did I say victory? Victory, victory shall be your portion. Not just today, not just this week, not just this month. It shall be from glory to glory to greater glory to overflowing glory in your life. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Have a lovely week, everyone.